Hi there, I'm Dr. Sandra Bloom. I'm Associate Professor of Health Management and Policy at the Dornsife School of Public Health, Drexel University. I'm going to talk to you about a tool that's called a safety plan. The goal of completing a safety plan is to reduce workplace stress and do what you can to reduce the stress on you and on other people. The idea behind this is about creating a safety culture. And a safety culture is one in which our values and our attitudes and our behaviors support a safe, engaged workforce and reliable, error-free operations, whatever we do at work. The way we think about safety are there are four key domains. The one you're accustomed to is physical safety, like keeping yourself safe and watching out for danger. But there are other kinds of safety that are really important. Being safe with yourself, psychological safety, being safe with other people, social safety, and being safe with a system of values that really support the way you get through life. A little bit about emotions. Emotions are hardwired. We are always feeling things. They are part of our physical and, and mental being. They are associated with faces. Every time we feel a feeling, we have a specific facial expression, and that's tied to reactions within our bodies. I'm going to show you a picture of the ways in which our bodies respond to different emotions. And you'll see that different parts of our body light up depending on what we're feeling. So anger and fear is associated with, in this picture, yellow and red, which would kind of be what most of us think about, <laughs> what we feel, the way we flush when we're really upset with anger or rage. And then depression, you'll see, and sadness are, are blue. So it's not a coincidence that we say we get the blues when we're really sad. What's important about this in the workplace is that emotions are contagious. We catch each other's feelings. It's a basic part of human biology. And it happens before we even know what we're doing. We automatically mimic and we synchronize our facial expressions and our tone of voice and our postures and our movements with those of another person. And then when that happens, we feel the same emotions that they are feeling. We are especially vulnerable to expressions of anger, fear, and disgust. And that's really because those emotions on somebody else's face in our early evolutionary environment conveyed danger to us. And it was really important that we tune into what it is that they are angry about or fearful of or disgusted by, because disgust begins with food, really, of being disgusted by a bad taste, which could be poisonous. So we're very vulnerable to those kinds of feelings in anybody else. And when we see those feelings, we experience emotional contagion, and basically our emotions get hijacked before we even know it. We're feeling somebody else's feelings, and we're likely to act on those feelings. So we fall into the rhythm with them and we're still not consciously aware that we're doing it. And then that makes it much more likely that we will act without thinking. Because regardless of how old we are or our ethnicity or our gender or our experience or how educated we are, when we become emotionally upset, our thinking brains don't work well and we can do and say things that we later regret. Who among you hasn't done that, right? This is what makes safety plans so important. Safety plans are simple tools that can keep people safe by helping us regulate our own emotions before we lose control. So let me tell you what we want you to do. You're gonna create your own safety plan. I want you to first assess your present skills. Identify what happens in your body. How do you know you'd better calm down before you lose it? What are the signals that your body gets that alert you to, uh-oh, I may be picking up somebody else's feeling and reacting to it? The second step is to identify your things that are called triggers, situations that are likely to very quickly overload you with negative emotions. So what are your danger zones? 
What are the situations that may provoke powerful and, and distress in you? What interpersonal boundaries do you need to maintain that keep you safe? And what emotions might you find particularly challenging? And then in the next step, we want you to create some, what I've called detours, right? How to keep you from being in that hijacked emotional state. So here's what to do. I want you to list five or six things you can do when feeling unsafe to maintain your own safety. Most importantly, things that you can do on your own to self-regulate. I want you to include things that can be done without a lot of thought and in many different situations without being in any way embarrassing. Choose some sensory items. I have some examples here of what are called widgets, right? They, they just things that you can hold in your hand, keep in your pocket, keep in your purse, and just kind of play with. They're otherwise toys, but really useful. Here's a stress ball really useful when we are tense. Here's a magnetic thing, pull things apart and bring it back. And then here's a funny widget that allows you to do a whole lot of different things. So get a couple of those, the ones that you like, that are distracting, that you can associate with a calm state. Other people like something they can smell or, or sounds that they can hear, or even things they can taste or do something with your body. Choose something that takes you elsewhere in your mind. Maybe a prayer or a picture of a loved one or a meditation. Choose a physical action like breathing, um, massaging your hands, pacing around if you're able to do that um, in that situation. And have a number of these available on your safety plan. So five to six that you can use whenever you feel, get that signal from your body that your emotions are escalating. And then keep your list nearby as a reminder. Put it on your refrigerator, a lot of people put it on with their ID badges, somewhere in your pocket that you can know what is it that I'm supposed to do and remind yourself when you already feel yourself beginning to escalate. And if you can, share your safety plans within your team. Teamwork improves safety. And that's what it's all about, really, creating and maintaining a safe workplace for you and for everybody else. It's all of our responsibility.